What's going on people? Welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to another video for you guys today. It's another transfer daily video even though transfer deadline day has come and gone and there's been no one really serious that's come in that's come into the club barely anyone that's even come out of the club but we're going to talk about deadline day we're going to talk about all the in the ingoings and the outgoings of the past 24 hours we're going to talk about how it impacts Chelsea's team going forward how it impacts certain individuals going forward as well and what the eyes are going to be like looking into into the January transfer window in about two months but before we start this video if you guys haven't done so already smash that like button hit the subscribe button as well and press that bell notification button as well to be the first guy to know whenever we release any new content here let's go straight into deadline day which for Chelsea especially with the way that we'd moved so early in the transfer window it was a very quiet end to the window there was no one really serious coming in there was little rumblings about us potentially trying to use up Arsenal's de um, Thomas party bid but that never materialized we spoke about that in the previous video as well about how he doesn't completely fit the mold of the DM that Frank Lampard is looking for which is why he hasn't really persisted in trying to get him he's been a name on Chelsea's list but not really high up on the list has been more second or third it's a great signing for Arsenal who to be honest needed more steel in their midfield he's going to be he, he'll be able to progress the ball well be, a, be the DM that they need as well to break up play and it's a good move for them overall would I have wanted him at Chelsea if we were if we were playing bank card FC and we're doing career modes with the financial takeovers and everything, yeah, I would take him because he would still be a better DM than I think what we have now. I've said it before about Kante and Kovacic. Kante can become a DM, but you need to coach the ball progressor out of him. He likes roaming around too much in the middle. I feel like he'd leave the spot exposed. So I'd say the same thing for Kovacic. Jorginho can roll in that position, but he doesn't really have the athleticism to deal with one-on-ones or anything like that. He's more good with someone else next to him as well. So overall, party would have been a nice deal, but all our focus is on Declan Rice. And like I said in the video yesterday as well, I would rather we go for what the manager wants rather than try and get other versions of the same sort of player because we've seen how in previous years that just doesn't work for us. But yeah, ingoings, barely anybody. Outgoings, the first player I'm going to talk about is Ruben Loftus-Cheek. He's a guy who's had such a frustrating last couple years. And I've said it so many times with that stupidly time-friendly as probably killed his career i'm hoping this fulham move brings his mojo back because he's needed to go to another club where he will feel like one of the better players in the squad where there will be more of an over reliance on him to try and get the best back out of him if you remember back to sari's season in 1819 he was one of the best players in our squad before that injury and even though we spanked arsenal 4-1 in the europa league final i do think loftus cheek would have still had a huge impact on that game as well as throughout last season as well but because of that friendly injury that really I, I've said it so many times whoever organized that time and didn't change it needs to get sacked because I fully respect the purpose of that friendly anti-semitism and all that like I fully get that I mean being against anti-semitism and all that fair play but doing it at that time with a week left before the Europa League final it was suicidal especially with the state of that pitch as well and for Ruben Loftus-Cheek at his age as well he's going to be so annoyed that he has to go on another loan deal to try and get the best out of him because all he's wanted to do is succeed at Chelsea and this is this basically feels like a step back for him because we did the exact same thing three years ago when we loaned him to Crystal Palace because he needed to get that feel of what it's like to play regularly and be one of the best players in the squad because that is what his potential is at Chelsea. He could still reach that potential. This Fulham loan is massive for him. I'm not worried about it because it's perfect for him. He doesn't have to move too far. I don't even think he has to move house. He, he will be one of the best players in that team. He'll walk into that midfield. It might take him a while to get back into the flow of things, but once he does, I Fulham are going to love him. I think overall, it's a great deal for him. He was initially meant to go to Aston Villa, but Aston Villa went for Ross Barkley because Ross Barkley had, there was actually the option to sign him at the end of the contract. Chelsea do not want to sell Loftus-Cheek. We still believe in him. And I say, also say in the case of Loftus-Cheek versus Barkley, Right now, if you ask me to keep one, it's Ross Barkley because Loftus-Cheek isn't at that level we want him to be yet. But in terms of where both players can be, Loftus-Cheek is miles ahead of Ross Barkley. So I'm happy with this loan deal. 
I hope I hope it works out well for him. I hope there's no more silly injuries as well because it's the last thing this guy needs. But yeah, Ruben Loftus Cheek has gone on loan to Fulham. It's a great move for all parties involved. Uh, next player we're going to talk about is Fakayo Tomori, and Tomori's been linked with loans throughout the entire summer. Rens were interested in him. They tried getting him involved in the Mendy deal with him going the other way. Everton have been interested in him since last season. West Ham as well were also interested in getting Tamori. We were there was rumours of us trying to include Tamori and maybe Emerson in a Declan Rice deal. But he refused a loan deal to West Ham with 10 minutes left of the transfer window. Not gonna lie, the tribalism in me loves it. But I do think it was a better move for Tamori over overall. I think he's in the same boat as Loftus Cheek without all the injury troubles where he needs the game time, he needs the experience, he needs to feel what it's like to be one of the best players at a certain club. And I think he would walk into that West Ham defence. Yeah, they play a completely different way to Chelsea. They just stick every man behind the ball as possible. But I still think that Premier League experience would be key for him and he'd be doing a lot of defensive work in a defensive-minded team. So, Loki, I do think it was the better move for him, but... The tribalism in me will take it and maybe in January we'll find a club for him to go on loan to anyway. Or, you never even know, might actually break into the squad again. Next player we're going to talk about is Antonio Rudiger and Rudiger has fallen down the pecking order throughout 2020. There was a lot of injuries at the start of last season for him and with our awful defensive mishaps throughout the season we were sitting there thinking Rudiger was going to come in and bring well needed experience and organisation to the squad and he literally provided the opposite when he came on. He was rash through everything, had a lot of disaster classes and has fallen down the pecking order at Chelsea. I think the coaches weren't too keen on him either this summer. They said he had a, what was it called, an uncomfortable arrogance and they had issues with his attitude. And the club have been trying to sell Rudiger throughout the summer but they haven't really had too many suitors because of his injury history and because of his age as well and probably because they've also seen a couple Rudiger games and they know that this guy is rash as well. But we have tried to push him out for a loan. There's been a lot of clubs interested in that. PSG were interested. Barcelona were interested. Roma, AC, Inter Milan, they were all interested as well. But it was looking like he was going to go to Tottenham. And I, I didn't, again, it's the case I don't want to see him in the shirt. But same way, I didn't think he was going to get any more game time for Chelsea. And Rudiger was one of the players I was thinking we needed to sell anyway. So I wasn't completely against the loan deal and Rudiger did have talks with Jose Mourinho about potentially signing for Spurs on a one-year loan deal but he also backed out at the last minute because he was worried about the backlash that he received from Chelsea fans after playing for Spurs for a season and he's thought that it's better for him now to try and endear himself to the fans by fighting back for his position in the first team squad rather than going out on loan to Spurs and potentially strengthening them because you know Chelsea fans are going to be salty about it and you're damn right we would be salty about it if we loan him to root if we loaned him to Spurs and he actually balled out. Barcelona, Roma and AC Milan like we said were all interested in the deal as well but because of financial constraints they couldn't pull the deal through and to be honest I'm not surprised if we had them pay a sign, a sign on fee anyway because we made Villa pay 11 million for Ross Barkley so that probably is the reason why they pulled out. PSG were also heavily interested, but they pulled out as well after failing to recoup enough sales through player transfers, which has annoyed Thomas Tuchel because he's complained already about the lack of players coming into the squad this season. And Rudiger, not, and Rudiger falling through as well has done nothing to help his attitude, but Rudiger looks to be staying at Chelsea as well. Next player we're going to talk about is Emerson, and we've said so many times, Emerson has had interest through numerous clubs in Italy. AC Milan have been interested, Inter Milan have registered interest. Juventus recently registered interest as well but both of those clubs pulled themselves out of the deal because Chelsea's valuation fee was just too big and I get with the market crash and everything Chelsea basically have their own rules because of the transfer ban last season we're the only club with serious cash in in Europe right now which is why we're still setting high valuations because we can kind of still afford to keep these players until we find the right the right move for them that's been the whole basis with the loan army as well so it's now just loan army with actual fully made pro professional players but apparently the cost was too high to even consider a loan deal with Inter Milan. Juventus have now moved for another left back. Um, Inter Milan already moved for Alexander Kolarov a few weeks ago. So Emerson looks to be staying as well. And that's the same thing with Marcus Alonso. Inter Milan were interested. Conte wanted to bring him back as well. But they couldn't afford to sign him with Chelsea's valuation of the left back. So they're all staying at Chelsea. Last player we're going to talk about, Malang Saar. 
who is on who is going to be going on loan to Porto. Their window closes in like the 25th of October, so we don't need to go too much into it. We knew when Saar joined, he was going to go straight back out on loan. I did kind of want to see him go to a better league than the Portuguese league, but if that's the club he's going to go to, fine. I mean, he might learn a little bit from Pepe in the in at the back, so that might be decent for him. But other than that, just hope he develops well at Porto. But what does this mean for Chelsea now? Because we've been trying to clear a lot of players out of our system for the last month or two and we have struggled. It's been partly the reason why we haven't been able to bring in Declan Rice. This means that we are potentially going into this season for the next two months with five centre-backs in Silva, Christensen, Rudiger, Tomori and, and Zuma as well. Someone is definitely going to be frustrated over game time this season. There's no two ways about it. I think Lampard... He might he might rotate with fixture pile up, but same way he's probably going to stick to luck, to defensive lineups that he, that he already knows because he's already come into a lot of criticism over the summer with the amount of times he switched up the defensive back line. I think the stat was 22 different setups in 44 games. So I, I don't expect to see too much rotation. I think our top three is already molded into its own position. We've got Christensen, Zuma both fighting for number two spot next to Thiago Silva. And the best chance for rotation for them would have been the League Cup, but we've been knocked out of the League Cup now as well, so that's not going to happen, which is going to be annoying for two of them. I think that's going to be Tamori and Rudiger, which was the two centre-backs we were going to try and get rid of anyway. And one good thing for them is the, wind the next window only opens in two months. I think they all get fair opportunities to get into the squad. And Lampard's always said he picks players based on how they train, not based on ability or based on... Uh, reputation or anything like that. It's based on how he sees them play in training. So they could end up getting game time. It's all a bit of speculation, but the only one thing I can guarantee is there is going to be one centre-back at least that's going to be fuming with the lack of game time he gets. Left-backs as well. We now have three left-backs, three professional left-backs, although two is very debatable on that. But I don't really care too much about left backs because I've already said so many times I sound like a broken record on this channel that we need to get rid of Alonso, he's a bum. We need to get rid of Emerson, he's a bum as well. I don't care. Like, I don't want to see either of them play. If one of them has to play, I don't care which one it is because I think we're get, going to get the same thing out of both of them. What? Hopefully we get rid of them both in January. I think maybe the valuation will go down for both of them as well. Or maybe one of them has a redemption arc. I don't know, but I wouldn't put any money on it. But guys, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to Carefree Lewis G. Take care, and we'll see you soon. Up the Chelsea.